Welcome to 2022 Talks, where we are following our democracy in historic times. I'm determined to ban assault weapons in this country. Determined. In Pennsylvania Tuesday, President Joe Biden promoted his plan to reduce gun crime, renewing his push for a federal assault weapons ban. Biden noted he has two shotguns at home, arguing he is not opposed to the Second Amendment. As one of the most conservative justice in history, Justice Scalia once wrote, quote, like most rights, the rights granted by the Second Amendment are not unlimited. They're not unlimited. The president also outlined a $37 billion budget request to boost law enforcement and crime prevention, training 100,000 new police officers over the next five years. Tomorrow, Biden will deliver a primetime speech in front of Independence Hall, where he'll talk about, quote, the continued battle for the soul of the nation, unquote. Just ahead of the 2022 midterms, the Justice Department unveiled new restrictions preventing non-career political appointees from attending partisan political events. The announcement comes as many Republicans accuse the department of political bias after the FBI executed a search warrant at former President Donald Trump's home. Democrats continue to hammer GOP candidates on abortion in the wake of the Supreme Court's ruling overturning Roe v. Wade. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker says the midterms are a referendum on reproductive rights. They've unleashed a tsunami of determined women voters and their allies who will lift up pro-choice candidates and take down the ultra-conservative fundamentalists this November. So to those anti-choice politicians, know that we are coming for you. You will lose in November. Some Republicans are quietly de-emphasizing their past abortion positions on campaign websites and on the trail. Others release TV ads specifying they are pro-life but won't support a federal ban on abortion or oppose abortion only after 15 weeks. Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis weighed in Tuesday on the plan to hire new IRS agents as part of the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act. So I thought it was really, really reprehensible uh, that they'd be mobilizing 87,000 IRS agents. And I think every member of Congress that voted for that bill uh, should be required to be audited every year by the IRS. About 50 percent in a recent poll said they believe the IRS will audit the middle class, low-income earners, and small businesses, or go after political opponents of those in power. Former Russian leader Mikhail Gorbachev died Tuesday at age 91. He's credited with creating a more democratic society in his country and made a historic agreement with former President Reagan in 1987 to denuclearize immediate-range nuclear missiles. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, Republican Senator Rob Portman and Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar met with President Volodymyr Zelensky Tuesday. The pair reaffirmed the U.S. commitment to Ukraine, NATO, and other allies in the area, and America's ongoing economic, humanitarian, and military assistance. I'm Mary Sherman for Pacifica Network and Public News Service. Find our A-Trust indicators to support transparency and accuracy at publicnewsservice.org. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer, you know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope. To learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.